Hello, Marcio. Hi. Hi, Marcio. Thank you for joining us, first of all. Thank you. And are you an iOS developer? I am an iOS developer. I started learning iOS with Objective-C many years ago, but mm -hmm. developing professionally, I've been working with iOS since 2015, 2016. Awesome. awesome. How can we help you? I have uh, mainly three questions. Uh, one is I have to, to make a network request. And after I receive the response, I have to make another network request. So it's a kind of chain of requests. I just want to mm -hmm. know the best way to write those requests. OK. One great way of doing this kind of chaining requests is to use a framework like Combine. Have you used Combine before? Or Rx Swift, yes. something like that. I, I use it Rx Swift more than Combine, but I, I study a little bit about Combine. It's the same idea. Yeah, it's the same principles. It's the yeah. same underlying uh, abstractions. So you mentioned loading a request after another request, right? So you need to wait for a request to finish to run the other because they have some dependency. Yeah, depending on, on what came from the, the first request, I have to use that as a parameter or to, to choose between two different requests to make. OK. OK, so let's say you want to load a user. Uh, user details. But to load the user details, first you need to make a request to get the user ID. Make sense? Yes. So if we're using Combine or RxSwift, or any framework that provides this chaining. What you can do is, for example, let's make a request here. Well, let me import foundation first and combine. So we can create a data task publisher. A user.com. Mm -hmm. Let's say that these requests will return a structure, something like just a user with an ID. Okay. Okay. And then you need to make another request to get the rest of the details of the user, like name, email. But first you need to get the ID, and then you can make the second request. So there's a dependency. Okay. You can only run the second request when you finish the first one. Yes. And what you can do here now is map the result, try map. So if you use Rx Swift, you're familiar with map, try map, flat mm -hmm. map, right? Yes. So you will get the result. It has data and response when it's successful. And here you can perform any kind of logic like check status code. Code should be 200, else we can throw the URL over add server response, for example. And if it succeeds, okay. we just return the data. If it matches okay. the response we expect, 200 or 201, 204, whatever we expect, and we return with data. If it doesn't, we throw an error. Oh, we lost him. Maybe we should carry on, and then he can watch the recording. OK. Yeah, let's carry on. OK, so the idea here is how to chain requests when there's dependency between the requests. You can only execute the second request when the first one finishes. Mm -hmm. So here we're showing how to do it with Combine, but there are many other ways of doing it. We showed how to do it without Combine in the mentoring session 009 and 013. You know, there are many ways we can deal with this. Completion blocks, we can use operations, dispatch queues, dispatch groups. Yeah. And we already showed how to use all those solutions. Right now, we're just going to show how to do it with Combine. Or you can apply exactly the same with Rx Swift, Reactive Swift, Reactive Coco, whatever you're using. So right now, we're just making the first request. And we are mapping the result. 
and then we need to decode the data. So here we are decoding the user. The user needs to be decodable. Let's say it's a JSON decoder, but it depends on your case. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's say this is going to return a publisher of user or error. It either completes successfully with the user or it fails. Okay. Marcio, is... are you back? Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm here. So yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to carry on even if you drop again and then you can watch the recording. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Fantastic. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Thank All right. No. So we make the request, we map the result. If it's correct, the status code is correct. We get the data and we decode it into our model using the JSON decoder, but mm -hmm. you can use whatever P list, XML, whatever you're using there. Okay, so this function here is going to return a user or an error if the request fails or the mapping fails. Let me return here, return. Then after we load the user, then we have an ID. And with the ID, we can make a request to load the user details. So let's do something very similar here. So load details. Okay, so here we can say a user.com slash uh, details, let's say ID, user ID slash details. So that's the dependency here. You can only perform this request after the first one because you can only perform it when you have an ID. Yes. And this will return user details. Okay. So let's create a new struct here, user details, also decodable. And here you get the name, name and email. Again, it could be any model, anything yeah. that you're loading mm -hmm. on the API. That's just a dependency from one okay. request to the other. All right. And that's it. So we All have right. two separate requests that need to be chained. And that's where the magic happens. You can have another function like load user details that will return the user details. Mm -hmm. So whoever is using this request and needs to load the user details, first, it needs to load the user. Then it needs to change this request to load the details. And one way of doing it is to use flat map. Mm -hmm. Here, flat map, you get here the user, you can return load user details with the user. And since flat map expects a closure that receives a user, and load details receives a user as a parameter, they have a matching interface, which means you can just chain it like this. Load details. Let's erase to any publisher. That's the chain now. First loads the user. When you finish loading the user, FlatMap will combine the result of the user into the load details and perform the second request. And whoever is subscribed to this publisher will yep. receive the user details at the end. And for the clients of this API, it looks like one request, but actually two requests were chained. Exactly. This is how you execute one request after the other in a simple way with combine. Because yeah. from the client point of view, it looks like one request. <laughs> exactly. So when you want to execute one request after the other, because there's a dependency between the requests, you can use flat map. Now, another scenario is when you need to execute two requests in parallel and combine the result. That's a fairly common behavior as well that we showed in the mentoring session number 13. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we're going to show now how to do it with combine as well. Yes. Which also applies to RX Swift and so on. So let's say after you load the user, you want to load the user details 
and the user friends. So let's create a new method here. Load friends. This will return an array of friends. Mm -hmm. Let's create a friend. Let's create a friend here. Friend has ID and name. Again, it could be anything. That's it. So after we load the user, we want to load not just the details, but also the friends. You want both, both of them. So the return here should be user details and the friends. And we can use a tuple here, but it could also be a model. Mm -hmm. So here we need to first load one request, then we are able to load the details and the friends because both the details and friends have a dependency on first loading the user. But once you load the user, you can run both of these requests concurrently with zip. So we zip load user details and load friends. That's it. Zip will combine the results in a tuple. You also have zip three and four if you're combining more than two publishers. And that's it. Now we are running first one request. And after we run this request, we run these other two requests with the result of the first one. And we combine all of them into one publisher. So from the client point of view, it looks like you're getting the user details and friends in one request. But actually, there are three requests here. Exactly. And if you want to combine two requests, you can use zip or merge, and there are different operators depending on the use case you have. Mm -hmm. And again, we showed how to do it without combine in session 009 and 013. With combine, it's much simpler because you get all these abstractions for free. Map, flat map, zip, merge, combine latest, and so on. That's how you can chain requests. In a simple way. What do you think? I think it's so much simpler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have to use uh, mutable state, you know, with semaphores or dispatch groups, stuff like that. So if you can, yeah, it's definitely easy on the eyes and <laughs> easy to develop as well. Then of course we can, um, eliminate the duplication there, share the data task and the try map decode operations. So here we could pass the URL dependency. Mm -hmm. Things that vary, right? The yes. other thing that varies is the type we are decoding. So we can create a generic type that conforms to decodable here. Yes. Okay. Now we have this load function. Then we can just call load. You pass the URL. It. Whoops. Of course, I need to create a URL. Yeah. <laughs> load friends. Now load details. And load user. We don't need any of this. Fantastic. As long as they share the same logic here, 
in the map. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Then we're good to go. And you can keep chaining. You can have 10 requests after you're loading the user. Or maybe after lo loading the friends, you can load an image for each friend. Mm -hmm. You know, and combine everything, chain all the requests, just using the universal abstractions provided by the framework here. All right. And that's it. OK. Let's see if we have any questions here in the chat. Hello, everyone in the chat. Someone say NS Operation Q. Nowadays, I wouldn't use Operation Q. I've used them in the past, but nowadays, I'll probably use this patch group if I'm not using Combine. Or Combine. Absolutely. This will not be supported before. Yeah. So if you're supporting iOS 12 and below, you cannot use Combine, of course. Then watch Mentoring Session 9 and 13, where we show different ways of doing it without any framework. Yeah. How to test this in TDD way? Watch Mentoring Session 008, where we show yes. how to test drive RX Swift, which is exactly the same with Combine. Combine. Yeah, mentoring session 008, we also show how to combine requests, how to chain requests. So check mentoring session, mentoring session 008, it's public on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Search essential developer, mentoring session 008. Test drive, a bunch of code like this. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Bye, y'all. See ya. Mm -hmm.